The new Volkswagen Sirocco GTS is today an Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. Earlier we have reviewed the Sirocco R, the top version of this model. Also check that one out in the video description, there's a link to it. This one, however, is not as strong as the Sirocco R, but maybe it is the better deal. So exactly that we're going to find out today with the exterior, interior and driving review of this car, which is sporty and emotional, but still affordable. Let's go. So where are we at with the Sirocco GTS? The basis model with the Sirocco, giving it German prices, 24,000 euros. The Sirocco R, 36,000 euros, 280 horsepower. And then the Sirocco GTS is in the middle, 31,000 euros with 220 horsepower. It's kinda the GTI, like with the Golf and the Polo. But the GTI name is reserved kinda for the Polo and the Golf. And so this one is called GTS. I'm not sure why they did that because, okay, either they keep just GTI as a special badge for the Golf. Yes, that would be logical. But then if you also call a Polo GTI, why not call this one GTI? Hmm. Whatever, GTS also sounds cool, actually. The front design does remind us of the Sirocco R we've shown you. And well, it does have the R package from Zero Production if you pick the GTS line. That means a stronger bumper, broader, lower, also bigger air intakes here in the front. And so it's everything spiced up already from the front, but you have to see in general also the Sirocco has a sporty look also from the basis model. What is also different in here, that is an option for 390 euros and in this case kind of crazy for a white car because there are these contrast stripes, not only these two red ones, I'm not sure how you see it on the camera. There's also some white foil on that one here, some white wrap and that doesn't really make sense when the car is white, when it's maybe grey, then it makes sense to have these white stripes on here. But in general, I would just go with a plain color, seriously. Oh, what do you think about that? To me, the Sirocco is probably the best looking Volkswagen because it's actually the whole shape. Everything looks kind of strong. And also if you would, you know, wrap something very tight around it, and in this case, the exterior around the chassis, especially you see that in the rear because you got the very strong shoulders here. And I really like this, especially and also with the coupe ending. And so the whole appearance of the car, you know, it's not too exaggerated still has some elegance but is very strong at the same time. Red brake calipers are from Zero Production with the GTS. Then those ones on the optional 19 inch rims. You get either them or in the silver also with 19 inch. From Zero with the GTS would be 18. That's perfectly fine. I would just go with the 18 inch. You can also not easily damage them and they add some more comfort. However, 19 is also quite a beautiful and they don't cost so much extra. It's way below 1,000 euros. So the optional price for that is actually still quite okay. I think it's 590 euros or something like that in Germany. We also got a black mirror cap here that adds more to this contrast. I'm usually more for chrome and silver contrast, but that's of course personal taste. Tell me your personal taste about black or silver contrasts in the comments. What else do we have with the GTS? We got a strong side lip here in the lower part that stresses the sporty style of the car even more. Now to the rear, I think here you can always say, wow, it really looks like a GT car, which would be used for real racing because the lower part is so broad and has this sporty style together with the kind of slim taillights. I think very beautiful design in the GTS version. You got those fake air outtakes and also a polished two pipe outgoing here from the two liter turbo engine. What do you think about the rear? 
Let's open the hood. By the way, the hood opening here is also in a good quality. I really like it. Although we don't have any hydraulic dampers. Let's see. So this is the known TSI turbo petrol engine, two liters of displacement. This case with 220 horsepower, the very same as in the Golf GTI. What is the difference in the GPI, or especially in the Golf R? It usually turns a little bit higher in the D mode. Um, that is one difference, for example. But you know, you can also go in the S mode, then this one also turns higher with the RPMs. But in general, really com totally comparable. Compared to the Sirocco R or the Golf R, we have less horsepower here with 220 horsepower. But you know, in the R version, we had this 280. Yes, it was a little bit more explosive, a little bit better acceleration, but it doesn't make such a difference because it's still all controlled via the front wheel. So 220 horsepower is really enough for that. 6.5 seconds from 0 to 100 kilometers, what else you want. It's really fun to drive it in the city and because you have this power reserve, it's always possible when you see, oh, I maybe need to make this traffic light when it's still at yellow. No problem with this car. Let's get inside with this standard Volkswagen key. You see that the window is going down slightly, a little bit then, because it's a coupe. Let's get inside, of course, huge doors. And then we've got a lot of serial equipment on the interior. For example, those seats, special GTS racing seats. Cloth on the inside, just a little faux leather application on the outside. You see they offer you good side support here as well as in the side upper part with a GTS logo on it. And then we also have a GTS steering wheel that is inspired by the usual other R steering wheels with constant stitches on the inside. And you also got equipment like the air conditioning and, and something like that. So actually a very high trim level in general. And indeed those sport seats, they are one of those that actually combine sportiness and good side support with riding comfortable and you know I'm 1 meters 86 in height and I still sit very comfortable here that's actually no problem and you can also adjust them it's all done manually it's the same on the co-driver side it's on the real, real driver side so you can bump it up yo or also the back of the seat and then go up in front general cockpit overview it is sportier than for example with the golf you have this sporty cockpit atmosphere and especially for the gts we also got some more features for example the shifting lever is in this golf ball design so you see those little holes here that feels actually quite funny and standard one is six speed manual this one here is a six speed optional dsg the dual clutch transmission We'll talk about more of that one in the driving part. And then one special feature we've already seen with the Sirocco R that has been introduced there is this special instrument cluster here above. And um, this one is inspired by racing because we have additional instruments there. It starts with the oil pressure and the middle one is the clock. I can also turn on the ignition and you can see it. And on the right part is actually the turbo. When I'm Let's see if it all also works in neutral. It should, yeah, you see, it's the pressure of the turbo. And the middle, the part, the clock, you can not only use it as a clock, you can also use it as a stop watch. Stop watch. Not stop watching, of course. Keep on watching auto gefühl, but here yeah, that's the stop watch. And um, then you can also activate it. Then about the basic instruments, very classic. Oh, Sirocco logo here, and Volkswagen logo, Sirocco sign. 
consumption 7.7 .7 liters at the moment um, yeah if you drive it sporty i think that's still quite okay then and um, so in the middle you can also have the gps information for example i can also show you how that works then assume you, you can change it then for example to the phone gps audio and also the consumption but in general classic instruments but very well visible really like the steering wheel it could be maybe a little bit smaller, but in general, good grip handle here. GTS logo on the lower part and then contrast stitches in. Really like that setup. And so from the whole interior here, do you miss anything of the Sirocco R? No, you don't actually. See everywhere around here, we got those black shiny elements. They look good when they are clean, but you see when the sun is shining on it, you see the dust on that one and also reflecting everything you probably also see it right now so i would rather prefer some matte aluminum style here but of course you can most of the time also pick different styles but that's the one that was picked here then the gps you see it has this proximity sensor for the buttons below there in general i think the volkswagen gps are the best actually at the moment because they got quite fast reaction times even though this is not the most current one the most current one is actually in the Golf 7. This one here is still a Golf 6 platform, therefore it's not the hugest one inch-wise. Inch, inch but it's only 550 euros extra and for a GPS, that's really not much. So I think the size is actually quite okay. And then you have got the hotkeys to go to your media from the phone or to the radio. Or for example also see some traffic information German Autobahn, which are always very crowded and therefore you can hardly ever get to the maximum speed. So overall, I think you get along very well with it. And what I also like is that you still get the volume control as a turning knob. I think that's um, a quite good solution because I, I just want that. You know, I'm just used to that. And while you're driving, it's maybe not that good yet that you do this iPhone, iPad style with cruising around. Then you also want to hold tight to something and then you can also zoom in on the map with this knob and I think that's a good solution that you can actually do both. I'm not satisfied with the climate unit because this is for nowadays for the you know for VW standards pretty cheap you know they are not really that fixed and this is also kind of loose here controlling the temperature and seat heating by the way optional. You know, we know that better from the Golf 7, so those ones are the small deals where you actually see that the Sirocco is still on the older platform. Lower part, I've talked about this golf ball design of the shifting lever so far. Very nice, also red contrast stitches. Sport mode, I will show you later and then. And then about the adaptive suspension, we got optionally in here. You can pick comfort, normal and sport. Also, I'll tell you more about it when we drive. You can put the ESC off, but as we got wheel spin in the front already, it doesn't make so much sense with, you know, with so much power. Um, I would rather put ESC off when I have rear-wheel driven cars that can drift around a little bit. And then there's here some space for your famous auto fuel garage beeper and also 12 volt power supply. By the way, the rear view camera looks like that. A very good resolution. It's also optional, but again, also less than 500 euros extra. I'll just show you how it looks when we start driving. That one is because I haven't put my seatbelt on. And if I go to the front again, I got the park pilot. See that is the beeper when something is in proximity now. Very good solution. Storage spaces, they are limited. You see inside of the doors, it's really slim to put actually some things in there. More space than just here at the standard glove box slides down very slowly that's how I like it and there you got some sort of even cooled function you can cool the glove box that's good then this middle part here in the middle console we've shown you already just some very little space here but the flipping process is actually high quality also nice detail the middle part classic handbrake I liked it you know because I'm always doing the rear wheel drifts all the time and then here open and close you can put for example the iPhone in here but also beverages, but then for beverages, you know, if they are kind of smaller bottles, they go left and right. That's not the best solution, definitely not. And we got a opener here, VW opener for bottles. 
I'm not sure why this is actually the feature included here. Maybe if you want to get drunk or something like that. <laughs> but yeah, let's be serious. When you're driving, zero alcohol, that's for sure. Then the armrest, USB port, aux in, and then some small, I'm not sure if you can get out the, the things you put in there. And again, how everything is processed, here with artificial leather on the top, you can put it to the front. And the whole processing, the quality also left and right, it's again very well processed as we know it. And the last one for your glasses up here. So in general, cockpit conclusion here. First of all, I really do like it because we have a lot of emotional features like the steering wheel, the shifting lever and the golf ball design, the additional sport uh, gadgets here. That's really nice. But however, we also got some outdated elements and they really need some updating. You know, the Sirocco had a facelift last year. There are a lot of things have been updated, but still you feel it's on the old platform. Not too much, but especially not in the GTS version, but just a little bit. So I hope they will continue building the Sirocco because it doesn't really pay off that much for Volkswagen. It is actually not so that often. And I wonder why, because it offers very good sporty experience for a relatively low price. Let's just hope they will keep on building it because it's also yeah, kind of an icon you know, for also these old models. So in general, the cockpit, solid, in general, good quality, and also with emotional features. Not the most perfect, most emotional cockpit you've seen so far, of course, but in general, I'm kind of satisfied with it. Are you? I'm going to show you one storage space on the driver's side, this one. Actually quite huge already. Only thing I don't like that much, it just flips down. But you know, maybe we don't need to be too, um, <laughs> too kicking on that one. Let's get in the rear compartment. You can slide the seat forward. That's of course then a disadvantage of this three-door car. Maybe we feel more comfortable with a five-door car, but it's still, I think, quite okay. I really love the design of the rear seats. I mean, how cool is that, that the rear seats are also kind of this integrated sport seats. They really look fancy. Maybe the best designed rear seats ever, seriously. And they're also kind of in some kind of hole here. And it's really funny to sit also in the rear. What is quite astonishing that, although I'm here as a tall driver, my knees do still fit here and also have some space. That's quite okay then also for adults in the rear. But then, with the headspace, you know, I'm just below 190 and I do touch the head, uh, to touch the ceiling with my head now. And yeah, maybe with when you are 180, that would still work then. But other than that, well, not that perfect. It's kind of a funny feeling because you're really caged in here with very slim windows. But you know, for a sports car, it is still relatively comfortable here in the rear, I'm gonna say. However, I wouldn't go, with my size, I wouldn't go like on very long trips with that sitting here in the rear. But actually, I think they have done it what's possible actually with the shape of the car. There's also a panoramic roof available, um, optionally about 1,000 euros extra. Um, I think it doesn't really affect the rear part, that it should more play a role to the front. And you can also flip those seats, by the way from here in the middle, not at the outside. That is also possible. And um, that's not really even to the trunk, but we'll also soon show you the trunk, just to show you right here already that it's still kind of flexible as an everyday driving car, but you have to do it really from here. You have no possibility to do it from the trunk. Let's see what do we have here, flipping VW logo. The rear view camera is also hidden uh, in, in here when you when you're sitting inside, it flips out, it shows the rear view camera. And there you see, it doesn't really make sense to have these stripes together with the white color, because that's some non-white color that above that really doesn't make sense. Very small, the hood. It is actually quite cool, let's say it, but that's actually a problem. You are limited to load stuff in here. If you have the stuff in here, you see, it's actually kind of angular, everything, and you have actually a lot of space. And also when you flip the seats, they are split in half. You can also put longer things in there, but really the problem how to get stuff in there because the loading sill is extremely high. 
So that is not the most handy solution here, but you have to live with that if you want to have this better design in comparison to a normal Golf, for example. Let's start our test ride. Got the rear view camera, it is optional. And we're starting here in the parking lot again to show you also the different aspects of every car because we had a very good feedback from you last time because it also belongs to driving a car, you know, how you get along in the parking lot. And well, Sirocco doesn't have the best overview when you look behind because of this coupe style ending. That is definitely one disadvantage, no doubt. And um, however, you know, this car is still quite short with this 4 meters 25. Therefore, it's actually no problem to steer around also here in narrow corners. To the front, the overview is actually quite good, and also, you know, the hood is not that long, so it's also no problem when searching anything where you can park your car. So overall, I think for a sporty car, it is still very good for the overview, although, if you think about, you can better see how where a golf is ending because the windows are steeper, especially when you look that way right behind. So now we're out of the parking lot and we will start our ride. I got the GPS to a destination running here as well. Overall I'm very satisfied with the GPS because it shows me quite fast how the route is changing when I maybe turn wrong sometime somewhere. And also the visual display is very clear so I, I really like that and also the sound, you know the, the sound commands it's also Good. We get start-stop function here. You know, I'm usually not a friend of that because well, sometimes it is useful, but there are also these situations when the traffic light suddenly turns green and you accelerate even harder then, and then you don't really have this fuel consumption effect because you have to accelerate harder because you need to catch up with the time. And what else? Well, sound insulation is, as we know from Volkswagen, always at a high level. Of course, if you go up in the mid-size segment, like the Passat, it's even better, but already on a quite good level here. So when we're standing still here now and the start-stop function is turned on, it's relatively silent, although we are around by a lot of cars here right now. And there are also the different riding modes, and I'm really eager to test that one. And that is one special feature about that car, for example, when you stop at the red traffic light, because it's really fun to drive the car, and it's so compact and so agile, you always want to keep, keep going on and you never want to stop at the traffic light, for example. I got the DSG here, the dual clutch transmission, as I've told you. Six speed, ah, oh, traffic light right again. But I can talk more about suspension then, um, not suspension, sorry, the um, transmission. Because usually you got the six speed manual gearbox. That one is the standard then for the Sirocco GTS and the DSG is optional for, for 2,000 euros then. I can generally recommend that one because that is very smooth shifting process. I will also soon show you. So this one is the normal D driving mode and we also have the DCC, the dynamic chassis control. That's the adaptive suspension. We got it set to comfort right now and we really got a comfortable ride. And together with those sport seats that offer you side support on the one hand, but also a lot of comfort. Maybe the seating area could be a little bit softer so you your bones you know, on your lower part, you know, that's maybe a little bit too hard and on the long term, so a little bit softer, but in general I'm quite satisfied with the seats also for, for tall people. Now I hope the traffic light will finally turn to green. But I, for example, I can also put everything to sport mode, put the DSG to the sport mode, then the RPMs will turn higher. So that's what you can actually change with the shifting. And I can also change the suspension to normal mode, from comfort to normal mode, and to a sport mode. And that really gives me a, a better feedback then from the road. The suspension really changes, you, you do feel it. And that's actually good because you can then combine having two cars, kind of a very sporty one with a stiff setup and a very comfortable one for the normal everyday ride. And I think that's very good. I can also recommend to pick this optional feature because then you can really choose depending on your mood, you know. Maybe you don't want always this very stiff and sporty ride. Sometimes you just want to relax, so. That is when you can turn the RPMs higher than you. Here also, 
that it's not shifting up that early, the car when I'm in the sport mode, you know, and I mean, two liter turbo petrol engine, and we already got a quite sporty sound. When it's wet, by the way, it's enough power that the front wheels get spinning, and we don't have a differential lock here, that's also different to the R version. Now we get on the motorway, let's roll. Yeah, I think for a two liter engine, small displacement turbo engine, I think the sound is quite nice and that adds to this fun feeling when riding the car. Now on the motorway, set the cruise control, about 100 kilometers, as I said, sound insulation, not at the highest level, but generally at a good level. And now, for example, I can also change from S to the D mode again. Usually there's one gear shifting up then, or that the RPMs are getting a little bit lower. Now also the sport suspension is kind of stiff here. You see that I'm going like this, but I can also, when I'm going a long-term run on the, on the motorway, go to the comfort mode again. And then it's getting softer and I have more comfort. And yeah, I think that's, that's a really good solution because you always have to think about options. Which ones do you really pick not to double the price of the car? But here, as I said earlier, it is actually quite feasible to don't enlarge the price that much if you pick some of the options here. And you don't need so many options because a lot of stuff already comes from serial production with the, GT, uh, with the GTS. So about the steering wheel, <coughs> I love the form of the steering wheel, I've told you so far, especially with the flattened end. But we had this discussion, um, one of you had a, um, had a very interesting aspect and said that a lot of people wouldn't be quite of useful to have the flattened end because it could happen that when you turn the steering wheel very far, very far, then you kind of grab in, you know, in a hole or something like that if you're not used to it. So I think in important aspect. But to me, it's especially good because it gives me more space for my knees, especially when you're a tall driver. So we've got comfort suspension now in D, but even if we're in comfort in D. Even then, it's fun just to steer around. Steering could be a little bit stiffer, I would say, because, see here, it's somehow light, and that might have something to do that it's still on the Golf 6 platform, so we got the steering wheel kind of on the current Golf R, but not the very Golf 7 platform that is in the very current models. And um, there they made it better with this very progressive steering, you know, that you don't need such a long steering way. Here I need some longer steering way, you see it's here. But say, oh yeah, <laughs> taking lanes here, it's always fun. And maybe you also see or hear that even in the comfort mode, it is of course a little bit stiffer than a normal compact car would be. If you, by the way, say, okay, mm, I don't need that adaptive suspension or I don't want to spend money on it, then the usual suspension, I mean, they are also in general already good. But you hear for the G GTS, you also get a sports suspension then, so a little bit stiffer than with the serial GTS. So just let you know that. But here, again, is the good thing that you can really pick that one. So overall, a car you can use for your everyday riding, not maybe for two L's in the back, because it would be also while driving, you may be a little bit complicated than to get out and in and out again. However, you always have fun in driving, that's very important. You rather have this sporty cockpit side, so you really know you're in a sporty car. But still, at the same time, it's not too uncomfortable. The seats offer some comfort, also the suspension is not too stiff, especially here now with the adaptive suspension you get a good chance to adjust your ride as you wish. And so overall, I think it's a very good mix to have an emotional car and a car that can be used in everyday life so quite well. And of course, compared to the Golf, also from driving, more stress really to the sporty side. Now the question, do I really miss the horsepower of the Sirocco R? No, definitely no, because it does not have an all-wheel drive. We criticize it as well in 280 against 220 horsepower. I mean, how much horsepower do you want to put on the front axle? That's, you know, has a limit. Because also when accelerating the car, 
just from the acceleration power, moves to the back a little bit. And therefore, usually very powerful cars have rear-wheel drive. That's the real reason. And Or you put it all-wheel drive, then if it's front-wheel drive, predominantly like all the Volkswagen or, and also Audi drive trains. Give it one more shot here for you. <laughs> yeah, actually, as I said earlier, especially when it's slippery a little bit, then it can happen that you have wheel spin in the front if you really hammer down the throttle. And I mean, that's kind of it. 7.5 seconds from 0 to 100 kilometers. You don't really need more power on the front axle. It's more than about you, actually, how good you can drive the car, how fast it then really goes. Now to the conclusion of the Volkswagen Sirocco GTS. I think it is one of the most recommendable compact sports cars, definitely, because you have a great design, really a great sporty design, even something more special than you would pick a normal compact car. Of course, you do lose a little bit of practicability in the everyday driving because you don't have five doors, not very well accessible than in the rear compartment, not the best accessible trunk. However, it is still suitable for everyday driving and all the things you want to do. But you have this very emotional exterior, especially with the GTS, even more sportier, spiced up. The interior, in general, a high build quality, besides of maybe some little parts I've shown you, and also from the infotainment, all kind of on the, on the current status, that's all fine, especially here with the GTS seats. I really like them and also the GTS steering wheel. So you get a very high trim level in general, a very good package where you don't need much any extra options anymore. So maybe if you pick the GPS then and review camera, something like that, at let's say one, two thousand euros to the price we have here, and then you're kind of done and have a very well equipped car. So I hope Volkswagen keeps on building it, but they have just recently brought out the facelift, so they still are kind of committed to the car, even if it's not the most, uh, the, the best seller there. And I wonder why they don't offer it on every market, because clearly you don't pay so much money, but get actually a very good sports car. And that's all the, the key factor. Even in comparison to the Sirocco R, it is really the better deal because you don't need the more power on the front wheel axle. It's the same kind of with Golf R and Golf GTI, where with the Golf R, you at least get the all-wheel drive. That's the main difference. And if you don't need your all-wheel drive, I would also always recommend the GTI because it's better in price performance. If you pick the same equipment in there, by the way, the Sirocco is always also a little bit cheaper than the Golf. So the entry prices can be compared partially if you pick the same engines, but then if you pick equipment in it, the Sirocco always remains a little bit cheaper. And so you get kind of a better designed car for less price. Not with the actual Golf 7, with the current most high-tech equipment then they offer, they can offer, but still no Golf 6 platform. But especially here with the GTS equipment, it doesn't play so much in effect that it's still on the old platform because you don't really see it that much. So that's about it, about this car. Also from driving, always fun to drive the car. I think you don't need to say much more about the driving. Comfortable enough, but also sporty enough at the same time. So I want to hear your feedback now on that car, exterior, interior, and what we taught you about the driving. And I think, will we see it at the next audio fuel review? I sure hope so. I will be there, and I think you too. Thank you very much for watching. See ya.